This I know. The Bible tells me so. And he turned around and went and sat down. That was his message. Some people were looking at each other. Wow, wait a minute. What's, what's this? Then they got to think. That is the greatest thing that you could ever know. Jesus loves me. This I know. And then they begin to see tears come down their cheeks and so on as that thought began to really sink in. How do I know? Because he took my sins in his body on the death, as a death on a cross. He says, their sins I'll remember no more. As far as east is from west will I place their sins uh, from me. Their sins I'll cast behind my back. Their sins I'll bury in the depths of the sea. So when I repented my sin, my sins is gone. I don't have to worry about my sins anymore. He took my sin judgment on that cross. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. And he rose now that I can have eternal life and receive forgiveness of those sins through his sacrificial death and become a part of his kingdom. And I rejoice at that. So he told him, wait, go. But he was also seen by two men on the road to Emmaus. We read about Luke 24. And uh, Jesus comes alongside him and he's listening. He says, what, what are all these things you're talking about? When did that happen? He said, well, that happened in Jerusalem. Are you just new here? Do you not know that they crucified this man called Jesus? Uh -huh. so they just listened to him. And he acted like he was going to go on further because they finally came to their little town that they, where they were going to go. And it says they urged him, would you come and have supper with us? And so he went in. And as he sat at the table and he broke bread, then it dawned on him who he was because he just disappears out of their sight. It was in the breaking of bread that Jesus revealed himself to those two men. They turned around and walked back 11 miles to get back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And even when they told them, the disciples still didn't believe. It wasn't until the upper room experience where Jesus comes into that upper room and doesn't come through a door uh, he, he walks right through the door. He doesn't have to open the doors. And he comes into that upper room. Thomas wasn't present the first time. But they told Thomas about it. They told Thomas about it. And then next time, when next week, Jesus appears to him again in the upper room. This time, Thomas is present. And t Thomas, he says, Thomas, come over here. Feel the nail prints with my hand. Thrust your hand into my side where I took the spear he says, my Lord and my God. And he says, Simon, you only believe because you've seen. But blessed are those who believe who have not seen. We believe we haven't seen, but we believe the word of God and the testimony of the Holy Spirit that guides us in our, our lives to do that. Uh, Jesus restores our hope, our hope in him and, and renews our faith. And the Lord's assignment was to be imitations of him, to go out and to imitate him to the whole world, uh, to restore the hope of the hopeless. That's our message. We have hope for hopelessness. We have, I remember as a young boy on that, in that orphanage that I grew up in, uh, we had 380 acres that we farmed. We had a lot of wild sunflowers. And I used to go pick a sunflower and uh, start with those petals. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. I know y'all haven't done anything like that. But uh, I went, uh, I, sometimes I'd have to pull two or three petals off together in order for it to come out right. Because I always wanted to, to say, she loves me, you know, to do that. Hey, all you have to do now is to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He does love you. He does. You don't have to try to uh, w climb a mountain or do anything like that. His appearance was an age of hopelessness and... Oswald Smith, a great missionary and statesman, said many years ago, why should anybody in the world hear the gospel twice until everybody has heard it once? He told him, and it was a simple thing, you go to the uttermost part of the earth, that's what we're supposed to do. And, and then he says in Mark 16, 16, the last, he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. We believe and we say we have salvation because what Jesus Christ has done for us. We rejoice on this Easter Sunday because it reminds us because I know that there are a lot of churches that are not preaching a risen Savior. A lot of people live their lives as though there were no God that there's, and there's such hopelessness.
on such despair. And I see that so much in, in the drug culture of so many people that are having to take drugs just to get through and try to get their high from uh, n narcotics and things of this nature, drugs. I get a spiritual high every time I come to church <laughs> uh, because I'm in the presence of the Lord. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in their midst and bless them. The Holy Spirit's strong here this morning. It's here in our midst and wants to bless you if you will let the Holy Spirit bless you. If you need to make a decision, tonight, today would be a great day on Easter Sunday for you to make your decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, follow Him in Christian baptism for the remission of your sins. If you want to come forward during the invitation, we'll talk with you and then we'll set up uh, baptism. We'll do whatever, whatever needs to be done. So won't you stand now as we sing. you have just a great Easter day and I hope you go forth in this service as witnesses like that's what Jesus wants to do for us to tell the world that he lives let's bow our heads in prayer father now Lord God it's been good to be here today because you're here you're here in the presence of the Holy Spirit and lives and hearts have been touched and father we've been drawn close to you yes father we read your scripture and understand the story there's so much more father that we're going to get whenever we get on the other side to get to hear Jesus tell the, his side of the story and to hear the disciples give different accounts of it and so on. Father, that's going to be a glorious day when you come back for your church. But Father, in the meantime, may we be the true witnesses that you've called us to be. Bless us as we go to our home. May your travel mercies be with us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.